Hello friend, welcome to Mountain Blade Warband. Not quite Bannerlord yet, but with the imminent release in just a few days, I thought it would be super fun to get back into the spirit of things with a bit of a run in Prophecy of Pandor, a full conversion mod for Mountain Blade Warband. So let's make a new character. If you're not familiar with the game, I will try to explain some things as I go, but man, did you miss the boat. Like it's, it's come and gone, my friend, it's come and gone. Uh, we are gonna be able to choose kind of what our background is. This is gonna affect our stats and our attributes. Our father was a minor noble in the land of Barclay, which is far to the southwest of Pendor. Now he arranged for us to serve a minor Barclay noble with the desire for us to become a squire. However, we, my friends, we heard about witchers and throwing coins and we wanted to sing. So we became a bard. We traveled the world until we heard a message that our father had died. And so what, thus we must board a ship for some reason and go back to Pendor. Let me skip this little background story real quick and I'll be right back. Will you once again take up the sword? We will in fact once again take up the sword, random lady in the background. So there's a bit of a story here with Pendor as a whole and I'm, I'm not going to spend much time on that if you haven't played yet. I do encourage you to try that out. We are going to do realistic, which is a punishing mode of saving the game. And we also have to select our leader's name. Now, what is a name that inspires confidence, courage, uh, you know, empire ship, if you will? I can think of nothing other than Steve. Steve is going to be the name of our character. I'm going to bump some stats here. Now, every three attributes you put in raises the cap of the child skill by one. So by having uh, 12 points in strength, our cap for any strength related skill is four. That's how that kind of stuff works. Uh, so 12, 8 is what we're going to do, 15 charisma. We actually have more leadership than we really should because of the background story options. Some of the choices you make give you extra things. So I'm going to bump prisoner management up because it gives us more people that we can carry with us. But more importantly, it reduces the chance of a lord escaping after battle. Now, if this all sounds like witchcraft and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I will try to kind of give you a brief rundown of what exactly Mountain Blade is here in just a tick. We've got to finish... Character creation, looting, training sounds good. A little bit of iron flesh for some protection. Uh, let's throw some points into archery and we get to choose our character. Oh my God, the polygons. Look at that. This guy could have been in N64 Goldeneye as one of the enemies. I can taste the polygons. Who is Steve? What does Steve look like? Perhaps a furrowed brow. Ooh, there we go. Now this is a guy. These are some eyes that have seen some shit. So let's go ahead and beard him up. Oh, right there. That's a winner right there. Anybody who can who can work the uh, the the braided beard, I'm down with it. So our leader, Steve, has his hair. You know what? Why don't we go for like a double? There we go. Ponytail. He's all about like business in the front, but still business in the back. He's he's both ways. There is our character. We are going to join a caravan to Sarleon, which is one of the five factions in this game. And yeah, there we go. Here is... Prophecy of Pendor. Everything about the original Mountain Blade game is changed with the addition of this mod. We have five factions in the game, which you'll see as we talk about and kind of move around with. And Mountain Blade as a whole is all about you and your actions in this world. You are a knight. You could be a peasant. You could have a horse. You might not. And basically, you can start doing things like fighting bandits in one-on-one uh, -on -one combat or one-on-ten combat. As you start to get more money and experience, you can hire people, you can form an army, you can become a mercenary to one of the great lords in the world. You can eventually, with skill and uh, a little bit of luck, manage to capture a castle or a city and begin your own kingdom. Declare yourself as the leader of Pendor or some other nation. Whew. Right, all that being said, we are going to gravel up to King Ulrich because King Ulrich pays the bills. So hello, King Ulrich, do I know you? I'm Steve. How are you? Not going to be polite or nothing. We're just going to say I'm Steve. Now, you can ask all these different lords for jobs. Oh, he wants us to go murder someone. That's fine. We're going to go be Judge Dredd for him. And what I'm looking to do in this playthrough is... And I have a set of objectives that I'm trying to get through before Bannerlord drops. So we're going to try to rush this if we can. And just as a heads up, whenever Bannerlord comes out, whether I get early access to it... Or early access to the early access? Yeah. If I get an advanced key from Tailworld then I definitely will be dropping this in order to play Bannerlord. So hopefully you don't get too entrenched in the, the playthrough here. Let's chat with Duke Elfwine. He has a battle hammer, by the way. I love this war. It's battle hammer or war hammer, but you can use a shield with it and it breaks through blocks, which is super, super fun. 
uh, brigands have been attacked. You want us, or sorry, brigands have attacked. He wants us to destroy the lair, which we can't really do. It's a little bit above our skill level. So what I'm trying to do in this run, and there's a lot of different ways to start the game. Some people start the game as a mercenary, or sorry, as a merchant. And you run from city to city, making as many trades as you can. Some people will do the tournament runs. There's tournaments held at these larger cities and you can make a name for yourself and money for yourself by going to all these different tournaments. What we're going to do is we're going to try to become a paid mercenary for Sarleon. And the reason that is, if you become a paid mercenary, what they do is every week they will send you some money in order to cover the cost of your band of people, whatever you wind up hiring, by most of it. Sometimes you don't quite get enough money to cover all of the costs, but what I'm also doing is chatting with all these guys because I have to chat with them in order to get the quest. This also is a great quest. This is where they are so lazy that they don't even want to, to, to take the taxes from their home city. <laughs> so what we're going to do, I like how he meets a stranger and he's like, hey, go uh, collect my taxes and bring them back. We're going to collect taxes due to Duke Brennus. Now, the cool thing is that under my quests here with Q, Collecting taxes, it is due 50 days to finish the quest. Once we actually get the money, as far as I know, there's no timer on when we have to return said money. So we can sit here with the money in our pocket and use it to fuel our initial expansion of our glorious mercenary company. Let me go ahead, <laughs> Random Wolf, by the way. You'll hear some really weird sounds in this game. Don't be afraid, my friend. I will be right back once we collect all of the monies from Avendor. Oh, by the way, the... the the locals can get a little bit upset that you're collecting taxes. There's a slight chance that they're going to rebel. I'm so weak right now that I might literally get knocked out by a bunch of peasants, which would really suck for this mission. We'll see. All right, so we were able to collect 6,600 dinars from this city, which is great because now we're loaded with money. And, uh, you know, although we technically owe... Uh, good old Duke Brennus this money, you know, maybe we give it to him in a little bit. Maybe we'll invest his money, therefore giving him a little bit more down the road. So I'm going to start trying to build up my army, my little force of worker bees as uh, we continue to search around the world for quests. Now, what I'm going to start doing is going into all these fancy inns and bars and taverns in the main cities because I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for people to hire that are mercenaries, like this guy right here, Barclay Adventurer, is a mercenary. I'm also looking for specific companions. A companion is someone that you kind of hire once, and they stay with you forever. If they get knocked out in battle, they get captured. I think there's a chance they get captured, but you can get them back. So they're basically an NPC that'll join you for a long, long time, which is super, super cool. Uh, you get to pick how they level up, and they can also be insanely useful to you. Oh god, what are we all doing out here? Uh, hey, let's go chat with a bunch of people. We don't want to talk to Duke Brennus. Got it. Is Duke Brennus hanging around here? Alamar, Elfwine, Leofwine. So many beautiful names. Rainier, Ulthan. All right. We're going to chat with all of these homeboys of the Sarleon Empire. My couch. There we go. This is the mission we want. Oh, we're so lucky. As it happens, I promised King Ulrich that I would hire a company of mercs. Yes, I would love to join the kingdom of Sarleon. By the way, if you hate Sarleon, don't worry. Down the road, I do plan on betraying them completely and taking their castles. My goal, if I can get to it, is to capture Valor Shield, White Stag, and Seven Crosses uh, Keep all in one fell swoop. And then we're going to peace out, become, uh, what do you call that? Become a vassal of King Ulric. It's really weird. If you capture a, a castle and create your own kingdom, like say we actually attack Sarleon, we capture a bunch of his castles, we can then turn around and be like, hey... I know we just captured your castle and all, but would you want us as your vassal? And he's like, yeah, sure, why not? And so that way you get his protection, but you also get to keep all of your lovely castles because it's really hard in this game to keep a castle once you uh, take it and declare it as your own and you kind of become your own country. Hey, guess what? Anson is here. Anson is a lovely gentleman with beautiful hair. Look, nice hair. Look at that spiky. Um, I'm not going to get into the background. Basically, Anson is a smart guy who just wants to get out and see the world. So he actually is one of the two people who don't need money to join your fancy party. So Anson is it's not me and Anson in the world. Look at that. Me and Anson. Anson's skills kind of suck. <laughs> he starts out with very little, if any, combat skill. Very weak as well. Very low strength. However, 
he is going to be our medico. He's going to be, we're going to be pumping that intelligence up and giving him a crossbow and telling him to stay out of the fight. And then by and large, he's going to do his own thing. You can also talk with your companions and tell them what you want to have them equip. So I'm going to tell him to equip and get better horses and armor as he can. And we're going to have him go with a one-handed weapon, shield, crossbow, and some bolts. Good stuff. Ooh, sorry for like the thousand mile an hour conversation. I'm trying to cram a lot of stuff in here in this first episode. Now, let's talk about the different troops in the game. If I were to go to any random town, I can recruit some rec some basic level recruits, like peasants, basically. I go to a village and I'm like, hey, who hates farming? And they're like, yo, I hate farming. And so we give them an opportunity to join our army and achieve glory through promotion. So we can actually take a look at the troop tree. So Sarleon, you start out with your peasant bro, and as they get better, you can kind of specialize them in different roles. So Sarleon is kind of average. They do have really decent cavalry. This is a separate type of cavalry that I'm not going to talk about just yet, but basically know that I could take somebody who's a recruit, eventually get them all the way to cavalry, although that's a very, very long road. Ravenstern are famed archers of the world. Their proficiency is insanely high with archery, so they have deadly, deadly archers. They also have decent-ish horsemen and some okay footmen as well. Uh, the Dashar Principalities, basically the Dothraki, they are very much focused on mounted combat, although their, uh, their dervishes, their spearmen and marksmen are really good as well. The Fjordsvein are a bunch of angry Nords. They have crossbowmen, uh, berserkers, and huskarls. Very, very deadly and dangerous up close and personal. And finally, the Bacchus Empire is themed after the Roman Legion, and until recently, I never really played with the Empire. However, their basic troops are really, really good. The Gladiators themselves are insane, 380 proficiency, but the uh, Empire Legionnaires are not too shabby either. So we're going to try to get a mix. Our, our army down the road is going to be a mix of Empire basic troops for the infantry and Ravenstern archers. But that is a bit down the road because right now we can only get... Well, we actually can still already recruit quite a few people. But first off, we need to start doing some stuff like killing bandits. And in order to kill bandits, I need to get someone better than myself and Anson in the party. So what I'm looking for, if I could ever find them... Oh, I'll show you here in a minute. Yeah, nobody here but us... Uh, but us... Wabbits and chickens. So Sir Roland is also one of these other companions that we can hire... The cool thing about companions is they give you a bunch of stats. The bad thing about companions is that not all of them like each other. So if you have all the companions in the game in your party, some of them will start getting fussy and start getting sassy at each other, and eventually they'll leave the party. So you kind of have these different balances and perfect combinations to have all of these different people in your party without getting upset at each other. Um, but, but, but what else do I want to do? We're going to go over to Marleon. Are we at war, by the way? Let's go to reports. No, notes, I think, is what I'm looking for. Notes, factions, Sarleon. I believe we start out at war with Fjordsvein. No, Fjordsvein and Bacchus Empire, not Ravenstern. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. The other part of my little playthrough, I want to do something that I've never done before that I only recently read about. And to start this mysterious quest, we are going to go to the town of Poinsbrook, up here in the northern reaches. By the way, control space will let you go much faster overland, overland, overland. However, it runs the risk of you not being able to react very quickly if you see a giant death stack in front of you. So yeah, be careful about using that. So we're going to go to the tavern and we are going to chat with Vorador the scribe and say, hey man, what's cooking? And he's going to say, hey, I heard a thing about a fortress. And we're like, a fortress, you say? And he's like, yeah, man, go over here and learn about it. And we're like, cool. Step one of quest one achieved uh no other cool mercenaries df woods uh woodenson is an amazing archer who we will eventually try to join uh, have in our party the reason i'm not getting companions right now is because i want to save my money for recruiting mercenary army uh, armored crossbowmen are not what i'm looking for either so what i want to get right now are mercenaries and specifically i'm looking for two kinds of mercenaries i want adventurers or young blank noble all these different factions can have their own version of a young blank noble the reason i want them is because they could eventually train into the adventurer which can then go to hero adventure which is insanely hard to get but once you get them they're like gods they are insane armor insane skills and damage 
they basically would turn your force into an unstoppable death machine for quite some time, as long as you don't fight the um, big, 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 bad enemies. The other, oh, sorry, I forgot. The other one I'm looking for are mercenaries, I think, and it can turn into mercenary cavalrymen. Yeah, so mercenary horsemen can turn into mercenary cavalrymen. Not too shabby either. They're not too bad as like a, a middling type of, uh, of trooper. So the reason I want the cavalry is because early on in the game, it's really hard, hard to build up your army. So if we go around and start recruiting people, it's going to take a really long time because the bigger your army gets, the slower you become. So it's going to be hard to join in and fight because most enemies will run away from us. Like enemies we could kill conceivably like a bunch of bandits are going to be faster than us. So the reason I want some mercenary cavalry is so that we can keep pace with and fight some harder enemies and kind of roll over them with our heavy cavalry. Ooh, Silver Mist Rangers, by the way, this is a knightly order. Knightly orders are probably something I'll talk about in a different episode. And I do want to show you a little bit of combat. So I'm trying to rush through this in order to show some combat off. Let's go ahead and sell some stuff, by the way. We have a loot. I love that. Let's sell our loot. I can't even hold this shield. I'm so weak sauce. Oh, by the way, the start that I chose comes with a coat of plates, which is, I think, the best armor you can get from a start. So insanely great armor. Probably we're going to be using this into the mid game. Oh, the other thing I'm looking for, I will probably not find for quite some time, which is the battle axe or, or whatever the heck it was, because it does crush through blocks, which I love. Also, we are in the town of rain. So let's wait overnight. And what I want to do is show you around the town because actually, hang on. Is there a better horse market here too? <gasps> step horse is 41. Gray step horse is 42 speed. I'm looking for a faster horse than my heavy saddle horse, basically. Let's just get something rather quick. Nothing too expensive. This will be a good improvement. We pay 1500 dinar, get a much faster horse, which is relatively useful. Hopefully we won't get ran down by any enemies. Now in the town of rain, in this version of Mountain Blade Warband, or sorry, Prophecy of Pendor, there will always be a little treat back here in the corner for you. It's called a Qualis Gem inside of this chest. Now, we're not going to use this because I think it's a little bit gamey. I just want to have it for later on. We'll use it later on, probably, but I don't like to use it early game and sell it because it kind of feels like a cheatsy doodle. Let's be honest. It's like 6,000 dinar you wouldn't normally have, but... oh. A lot of talking. I mean, I talk a lot, but that's a lot of talking. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. And I want to try to go to these different cities we're not at war with and find a bunch of mercenaries. Once I get about a dozen or so, I'm going to try to pick a fight with some bandits just to show you what the other part of the game is. There's basically two parts, this overland map part, and then there's the combat, the strategy of it all, which is super, super fun. I think the bandits or the bounty hunters do have uh, archers or sorry, horseback but they're kind of meh. So I will continue on my journey. And uh, by the way, thanks for joining me for this quick little let's play run. If you do enjoy this small series, uh, however small it's going to be until Bannerlord drops, I do ask that you please like subscribe, do the, do the needful. It actually helps every time someone like makes a comment. Even if you say you suck at mountain blade, that actually is going to help me. <laughs> it bumps the video in terms of the YouTube algorithm. So yeah, I don't care. Yell at me, call me names. That's fine because you're still helping me. Ha. Huh. Oh no, we've been ambushed. Crap. Every so often you'll start to get ambushed by a bunch of random people, which is kind of a pain early on because we're weak sauce. Ah, oh, balls. I think there's someone back there too. Let's go uh, charge down our archer friends. If you wait too long, by the way, these guys will start aiming for your legs and stuff too. God. They're pretty smart. They like to do little flanky things. Let's see if we can rush this guy. Huh. Nice. Always, uh, always lead with a jump attack. There we go. Okay. Two enemies down. These bastard thieves, I think. Oh, hey, there was only two. Lovely. Well, we fended off the enemies who wanted to uh, assault us. They don't kill you, by the way. They just kind of take your money and run. Frederick. Hey, there's some young Ravenstern nobles. Absolutely. I'm going to hire you and five of your friends for some money. Serene is hanging out here. Frederick is hanging out. Both of those guys are the companions that you can buy, which again, the reason I'm not picking them is especially the knights, the Sir Rain and Frederick or um, Siggy Sigismund. They're very, very expensive to get them in your party, like five or six thousand dinar. And while we might have that for one of them, it would be uh, very challenging with just one companion and nothing else going on. 
Hey, you know what? Here's an opportunity that we don't want to pass up. We are at war with the Feards Vein. So what we could do in this case... Ooh, actually, you know what? Let's not do that. No, let's let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, Feards Vein are in green. Ravensterne are in blue. So you can actually like dogpile in on an existing fight that's already happening. So we're going to help Lord Hengist. And the reason this is so much fun... Oh, by the way, let's also go and make sure our ba uh, battle size are up to maximum. There we go. Lots more troops on the field. Maybe? There they go. They all just triggered in there. So we're going to have our, our recruits come hang out over here. This is the map battle phase of the game, by the way. This is what I'm looking forward to so much in Bannerlord. Because you're going to have massive hundreds and hundreds of enemies versus hundreds and hundreds of enemies. The system for controlling your troops is now like... A, a very cool squad based system. It's so slick. It looks so good, you guys. I can only fanboy so hard before my heart literally gives out. So it's just a couple of more days. And I hope this gives us a good feel and teaser feel for the upcoming Bannerlord release. But the reason it's fun to dogpile into fights like this, if we win the fight, which we will, there's a small chance that we will be able to capture the enemy Lord. And you can actually force the enemy Lord to pay a ransom which is another like four, five, six thousand dinar. That would be amazing early game. So make sure you always dogpile in. God, this audio is loud as balls. There we go. <laughs> make sure you always dogpile in to any fight where your allies are winning, because that's going to just basically be a free chance for you to steal a, a lord. Also, you can keep your troops right back there at the start. I access that by backspace, by the way. If you didn't know. Let's see if we can't get a kill here. I'm going to aim for this dude right here. Going to come on up. He, try he tried to hit me, you little bastard. Now, he's got a really freaking long axe. I don't really want to mess too much with that. Oh, God. Oh, God. That was a bad idea. Oh, that's a bad idea. Bad plan. Bad plan. Why are they all trying to fight me? I just want to be friends. <laughs> well, that's a great start. This is pretty traditional of how I play. doesn't really matter at the end of the day because we still are going to win the battle. We, meaning our allies. Good God. First combat, no, you know what? Second combat, I survived the stupid uh, assassins. So there, my first episode didn't have me die in first time. <laughs> but this is a large part of the game, by the way. So you've got the overland map and then you have this tactical battle screen and you're able to kind of move your troops around and organize it, or you can just go crazy and have them attack as, at random. But there is some strategy involved by moving your troops around. You can flank the enemy. You can have an archer line, start peppering the enemy force first. Uh, you can follow up with a cavalry strike around the flank, for example. Lots of fun, fun tactics in this game. Uh, Bannerlord is going to be introducing a lot more tactics. I think there's a, a shield wall. Um, there might be a brace option, so they brace for a charge. Oh, so many fun things coming up. There we go. There's the end of the battle screen. We were wounded. Uh, we didn't do a damn thing. While well, our allies killed 27 enemies. Uh, this is a lord who's thanking us for your help. And I'm saying, hey, I'm Steve. Not a problem to help you. Oh, here we go. And Jarl, one hand. We are now going to be able to capture him. That's such a cheatsy doodle move, and I love it. Uh, let's go ahead and capture a bunch of these random um, extra people here. Noble warriors are going to sell for quite a bit. Uh, prisoners, by the way. You hand them over to, oh, I don't know. We'll say labor um, labor managers, right? Is it, a, is it a nice way to say slavers? <laughs> so we'll sell them to some slavers and get a bit of money from them. Jarl, one hand, we're going to talk directly to him and say, what's up, buddy? You want to buy your freedom? And he's going to say, holy shit. He's going to offer us a ton of money. Yes, please. Thank you. If you keep them for long enough, eventually... On, uh, for their behalf or on their behalf, the their kingdom will actually message you and say, hey, would you accept a, a, a ransom of this much money? Normally, if you keep them, you'll get more money. The downside is that you, uh, you there's a chance of them escaping, so it's not always feasible to keep them with you. Probably best to just immediately ransom them until you have a castle. Here is a massive stack, by the way. This is a kind of a neat little thing for the end game. There are armies out in the universe that are third faction or, or third party, sorry. So these are the Mist Mountain uh, or this is the Mist Mountain army. 580 troops in that army. Very challenging. Obviously, early game, we would get our asses kicked. Really, if any if anyone gets caught by them, 
they get wiped out. So it's very dangerous. You have to be really careful when you're traveling the overland map because you can kind of be intercepted by, you know, some scouts from a very large enemy army. So be very careful when you're going and moving around overland. But otherwise, what we're going to do, Barclay Adventurier. Ooh, lovely name. Uh, Riva and Kasim. Let's, what's the Barclay guys? Reports, troop trees, hmm, adventurers? They're like Barclay Adventuriers or something weird like that. Uh, mercenaries. Ooh, you know what? I forgot. The Barclay troops have arquebuses. Arquebai? <laughs> Arquebusai? How do you pronounce that? God, that would be interesting. The firearm, the arquebus can do a ton of damage. I've never actually really used them in the game before. We could train him to become a lancer. But the thing is, early on, he's still going to be on foot. I think I'm going to pick some of these guys up later, just to see how the Arquebus uh, do. The Arquebus is the only firearm in the game. You can pick up a firearm, by the way, if we recruit Donovan and over in the town of Valenbray on a boat inside the city. If you kind of walk around the city, there's a boat that has a chest that has ammunition for said Arquebus. So it could be really, really fun for you if you want to go down the firearms route. Personally, I'm not a fan of using it myself because I feel like the reload time is really, really painful. Hey, guess what? There are some random slavers here. We're going to chase them down and free the farmer and the peasant woman. We have eight troops versus their two. So we're going to send our army to charge. Ugh, actually, freaking hills. I hate hills. Let's bring our army over here. The F keys, by the way, are what you use to give orders to your troops. So F1, F3 will charge my army outward. You can see Anson about to get schlacked. See you, buddy. Completely missed my first hit. So Anson is down, but he's not dead, by the way. He's just knocked unconscious. So no real loss there. Anson is going to get his face knocked in. He's like that guy in the meme, uh, like the guy that gets hit by the volleyball and the soccer ball a bunch of times. That's basically Anson. I can't believe one of my guys got dehorsed. We're like eight versus two guys. Oh, come on, guys. Really? Are we that bad? To be fair, these nobles are basically peasants on horseback. They're really, really bad. And my gameplay currently is not much better. Let's try to save as many of our allies as we can before they get themselves killed. Let's kill this guy because the guy on foot that has a crossbow is kind of a dangerous thing because right there, charging someone who has a crossbow loaded, not the smartest thing in the world. Guys, if you can't kill them, Oh my god, thank you. So one versus four, three, he still might win. I'm not even joking. Our our troops are so bad, there's a chance we're going to lose this battle. One versus four. I have faith. Okay, I have less faith now. Oh god, this is awful. We could, okay, let's have everyone, oh, he's going to get his crossbow out and pop us. Did you turn into infantry? No, you're still considered to be cavalry, I think. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Let's say, you know what? Uh, cavalry, hold your fire. That's going to force cavalry to go into melee. Hey, we dehorsed him. Okay, we're down to just two guys. This is it, guys. Come on. This is a matter of life and death. Don't block, attack. Don't block, attack. You're, you're definitely not listening to me. I think we can still run away from this battle by pressing tab. And we won't get captured. So if we get down to one troop, I will turn tail and run. Although I will be very ashamed. Yep, you're down. Okay, we're going to press tab and run away. How embarrassing. We just got absolutely <laughs> smashed by three freaking uh, Red Brotherhood slavers. <sighs> this is how this small playthrough is going to go. Hey guys, I think this is a good point to start talking about putting a cut in the episode. Again, small let's play until Bannerlord drops. I hope you do enjoy this. I will try to put a bunch of these out in a row to try to power through. I heard someone in Discord, by the way, mentioned they don't know what Mountain Blade is. I take that as a personal offense. So I'm hoping that this is enough to explain what the game is and really make you think about your life decisions by not playing this beforehand. But uh, I'm so eager for Bannerlord. Upgrade, the, the graphics look amazing. I did play the multiplayer beta and the combat is incredibly smooth, intuitive, just as much as this was a thing, you know, when it came out, the combat system for Mountain Blade, I think was really, really good. It, uh, the Bannerlord is, is that next step improvement. It's just as good again uh, in, in the current quality of games. So really, really fun. I have not seen anything about the campaign. And if you didn't know, Tail Worlds, the maker of 
Bannerlord. They are from Turkey, I believe. So a lot of the setting, I believe it's set in the migration period. So around three to 400 AD. And that's right, right around the time when a lot of the hordes were starting to invade, um, starting to poke at Rome, starting to poke at the uh, holdings in France and stuff like that. So a very interesting time period. I'm super eager to see both that, the base game, and of course the modding community for Mountain Blade is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Hey, yeah, do you want to know why I have got a bunch of gaps in my uh, my roster? No, just join us up. It's fine. Now that we have extra money, by the way, next episode, I think I will go into looking for some companionship. We will buy and uh, find a companion to join us and hopefully be a good trainer because training, by the way, very important skill. If we take a look at it, training, anytime you are a higher level than someone below you, you impart a little bit of wisdom to them. So if you have a lot of people with good training, you can level up a new recruit army to a good quality army very, very quickly. All right, friends, I think we've covered a lot of the stuff that I wanted to get out in the first episode. Next one will be me talking hopefully less quickly and uh, we'll be experimenting and, and seeing who kind of uh, who? Yes, uh, what kind of enemies we can face helping our lovely allies here, our Sarleon friends in battle. One of the best ways early game to get some experience and get money is to try to follow your main army, uh, your your ally armies in fighting. So if we're at war with, say, the Empire, and you happen to see, there's a little pop-up that might say being under siege or something. Whenever you see that, you know that your allies are kind of like right here. This has been looted recently, so that indicates that maybe there's an army nearby. So we'll experiment a bit. Oh, right here, somebody's raiding Belmont Fair. Rude. Basically, you're murdering a bunch of innocent civilians. Not the most PC of choices. Just saying, not the best image for PR, but hey, Sarleon, do what Sarleon do, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, please do like and subscribe because it does help boost this video in preparation for Bandalord, I think, and I hope uh, I'm ready. I hope you're ready as well. I'm really, really eager to get my hands on it. Uh, if you have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments. By the way, hi again. Yeah, sorry it's been like, oh, I don't know, a thousand years since I posted anything. Uh, if you're not caught up on what's going on, I did make a second channel just for simulation gaming. So Tobal plays Sim Games. Uh, I will have that as a link somewhere or other. But in case you really like the Sim genre, I did decide to separate it out because I play so many Sim games, but I realized that not everyone wants to see that. So you can pick and choose, my friend, what you'd like to watch. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want to join our lovely Discord community, click the link in the more description field below. <sighs> Until next time, my friends. Steve wishes you well. I wish you well. Take care. I'll see you next time.